language should be a medium and it should not be an end and personally i believe that if we do not read literature in different different languages we miss on so many dimensions of life hello and welcome to fixing the bug powered by code quotient a podcast where we talk about coding and everything related to it be it market trends educational policies and teaching methods entrepreneurship or jobs and in today's episode we have with us dr manjula choudhury who has been working in the education sector for more than 25 years and is currently the dean of academic affairs at kurukshetra university a public university in haryana which was established in the 1950s so welcome to the podcast ma'am thank you for giving us your time thank you thank you very much ma'am how have you been good very good okay great so talking about your experience in the education field you have decades of experience but okay. how did it all start what made you venture into the education sector well uh, shivangi to tell you frankly it was never a planned view uh, planned move because i was an mba and i think in the mid of the 80s no one was coming into teaching after doing an mba mm. it, it was a very like uh, wanted wanted degree in the market So right. it was a chance I had registered as a research scholar, and one day while I was going up the stairs, my PhD guy told me, "Are you not appearing for interview?" I said, "Which interview?" He says, "Like there is an interview going on. You just go there and appear in there." So I just uh, like uh, uh, came down and went to the interview, and then I was in, and I liked it so much that I haven't looked back. So, wow! So so far it has been a fulfilling journey. So it's like some. magical wand that person had in his or her hands and they helped you with choosing something that you did not think you might like so much yes yes certainly amazing so from your time in college to now mm-hmm. you have seen education system change drastically probably mm-hmm. so what do you think are the most beneficial changes and what do you think is not very beneficial well education has come a long way in fact when we were studying it was only pursuit of knowledge mm-hmm. and we were learning for life job was not on our mind even when we were doing mba we never thought that we are studying for job but as of now it's all about pursuit for job and whatever learning is being done it's learning for earning mm-hmm. and uh, so basically a lot of commercialization has taken place and there is a lot of shift towards job oriented courses the advantages that uh, you have more manpower available for the industry and who are employable hmm. the disadvantages that we have forgotten the difference between training and education and then we are so abs- obsessed with degrees and employability that we are forgetting that education has a much much larger purpose to serve right because uh, in the recent conversations that i've had everybody was focusing more on what you say has been done in the past that degree should be for the sake of learning then you up your mm-hmm. skills by going into a particular direction and mastering a particular skill to earn a better sum in your employment mm-hmm. but yes we we are shifting towards the older ways now i think in, indeed we are and uh, if you look at this uh, national education policy yes it talks about balanced and holistic approach so earlier what we were having in the university also we have divided subjects into traditional subjects and professional programs or courses mm-hmm. now education can never be segregated in this manner so this uh, national education policy 2020 talks about a balanced approach where students can be exposed to traditional subjects as well as modern subjects and so so they can study sanskrit and they can study artificial intelligence uh, simultaneously hmm. and and they, when we were studying there was a too too much uh, obsession with the uh, educating in english it's now that we are dropping it which says any any language is good language should be a medium and it should not be an end Hmm. and personally i believe that if we do not read literature in different different languages we miss on so many dimensions of uh, life which otherwise would be visible to our students and say 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 take take for example when we watch any movies or read any books and the students get an understanding that it is only the america who who saves the world hmm, so most right. of the young students they have they have developed this obsession so at least when they study indian literature or other languages they will know that everybody has the responsibility hmm. so that's how the focus has been shifting right plus uh, what i understand is that mastering different languages helps your brain function in a better logistical and calculative manner yes certainly certainly research is also 
prove so that mind starts functioning better so do you think the new education policy would help addressing the employment gap that we have well it it should help in addressing the employment gap that that we are having because uh, when when you do focus only on training and employment oriented courses mm-hmm. the student gets too focused on the narrow skills and when they go into the industry industry feels that something is missing mm-hmm. and what something is missing is their desire to learn and sometimes they are not even trainable also because they feel that they have studied enough and attitude is a very very big problem so with the, the in a, this uh, national education policy they will be like exposed to so many different uh, areas of uh, verticals of uh, courses and subjects hmm. i i believe that their mind should be more open now and they should be more receptive to the training or new inputs or new learning which earlier was completely missing because uh, earlier we were having a very straight jacketed approach to education hmm. and it, it is it has been a challenge like how how to move them out of this uh, fixed format so this national education policy sir shall certainly help before we talk more about national education policy i understand when we were in this in this age of time where the education was more focused on training the kids for employment you were a part of the uh-huh. teaching So uh-huh. what was your approach to make sure that students learn more than just what's written in the books Well uh, fortunately I was working in the management department in the initial stages of my career and then moved on to the tourism department and we were students we we were getting the best of the students uh, from the market so they were focused they were self motivated and then uh, they they were very participative in different activities mm-hmm. and we were ensuring that they learn what is beyond uh, textbooks and uh, which which i feel that at the later stages it it goes missing and this is happening in some premier institutions also they are so focused they don't stand for truth hmm. they don't stand for friends and they only they have only one agenda on their mind that uh, how how to have a better career but that's how we as a society are functioning as well right we want our younger ones to be more focused on how they are going to earn to excel in their degrees so that they are able to land a good job like education is also a reflection of society mm-hmm. but what is happening few students might be landing a good job but overall the quality of life is coming down right. look what have we have made of our environment i mean education should not be doing it 100% so talking about uh, new education policy again it is being implemented in the kurukshetra university so could you share more details on that how that is being formulated well it it has been a tough job and it has been a challenging job also though we are implementing it in all over undergraduate campus in courses from the uh, forthcoming admissions hmm. and the, the challenge has been like uh, people are not accepting how how we can offer so much of flexibility to the students hmm. Ar- earlier we were fixing uh, the courses that in a program these are the four courses you can study so that you get the degree now we are saying that this is a complete bucket of courses please choose whatever you like so with physics you can choose economics and with biochemistry you can choose home science Mm-hmm. and this this has uh, like not only like everybody seems to be under stress whether these are students or these are teachers and talking about the teachers making them understand has been more challenging probably students will understand it in a easier manner and so what we did is like we had a number of discussions with the important stakeholders and though, though of course we had to do a lot of pushing we adopted a top down approach mm-hmm. we are first we talked to all all the concerned uh, departments and then we prepared a template and they were simply asked to fill in that template which takes care of every component of uh, national education policy whether it is a online and offline blending and blend of traditional and modern courses mm. and this uh, comprehensive assessment moving away from the like continue like one one single examination the so called annual examination and but but what what was happening like most of our teachers and they they were everybody was uh, like protecting their turfs like is my workload is uh, diminishing or how it will affect the uh, teaching positions in my subject no one was bothered about like what is what will happen to the students hmm. if we give them a lot of flexibility but then we overcame it through awareness uh, workshops we created a lot of workshops for the students teachers everybody 
and we told them what does it mean and uh, how how it is going to be implemented and i'm happy to tell you that my students were more receptive in fact the students who are already in final year they said that implement it on us also mid midway through the course wow. so they were more uh, more accepting of it than the teachers but mm. we but we are sure that we will be able to implement it very very effectively while while i agree that flexibility is very much important mm -hmm. i have seen that when we are given plenty of choices we end up being confused did you see that case well we we considered that and then uh, we thought that we will do the counseling of the students where uh, they, they can be told like what courses are good for them and what kind of combinations can be opted by them okay so apart from new education policy you're also leading uh, rashtra uchchatar shiksha abhiyan at kurukshetra university so could you brief us on the process of that and on what all rusa works upon when the rashtriya uchchatar shiksha abhiyan was talking about all the elements of national education policy before this policy came in maybe the government was experimenting mm -hmm. and the basic uh, fundamental behind this uh, rusa is that if you perform well only then you should get a good a good grant because if you don't perform there is no reason that fund should be invested in an educational institution mm. so first we entered into this rusa 1.2 where uh, government gave us uh, 20 crores for infrastructure development we executed that very very successfully and with the help of the support that we got out of this 20 crore we were able to improve on many many parameters as a result university was rated as a category 1 as well as nac a plus nice subsequently we participated in rusa 2 and we were where we were given a grant of 100 crores wow. so we performed that's why we were given the second phase of the grant and and we were, whatever we are talking now under this nep mm -hmm. and at that time also we were told that we must create a center for innovation entrepreneurship and incubation something which was never talked about in the universities mm. uh, of course the iits iims and some of the institutions were working on it uh, earlier uh, so so we started working on it we started building these centers and it, we were very surprised then the, the same thing was reflected in nep also so before the nep came we are sort of like 70% prepared to, to to move on with the nep and uh, at that time there is a very important thing Gov government was aware that the public universities have the limitations imposed on them by their ecosystems so we were really uh, like encouraged that we must form a society if we have to make this rusa project a success mm. uh, again something which was very unheard of in, in the universities we ourselves were confused but then we persisted and we created a society kurukshetra university rusa project society as a result we have been able to execute our project very very effectively we we took a leaf from the books of iits and iims we are so many societies work within the campus and there are companies also within the campus mm. so so that these things can be fast tracked like we cannot wait for 10 years for a project to complete so it had to be completed in 6 months so yes rusa has been a very good uh, support to us not only for infrastructure building but to prepare us for the nep also okay so like you mentioned that you had set up a separate cell for teaching students entrepreneurship the qualities of it so do you think an entrepreneur mindset can be inculcated through curriculum well there there is possible and uh, possibility but only thing is that we can only make make the students aware about this uh, entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship hmm. and uh, we we cannot teach them about uh, all 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 these things and uh, so so what we had done in order to inculcate this uh, in, uh, entrepreneurship among the students hmm. we we started doing a large number of workshops we we like uh, kept it away from the curriculum so these were the training programs we were organizing a number of workshops in fact we were having one workshop every week and we made we we contacted every person who was under 35 category and they have been awarded mm. as, as young entrepreneurs everybody we took everybody on board and they were speaking students were listening because of their young age students could connect to that right. and and then a, a, a type of movement began and of course with the support of the rusa we created a startup uh, like cell mm -hmm. uh, we we are, we are funding also and we have already funded one startup in, in the home automation okay so it's very necessary it gives boost to the students that their 
ideas might not perish because they have support from the university itself yes yes and not only this we also connect them with the different government agencies like startup india we we are uh, where they can get the support hmm. so we invite bankers we invite everybody from the government to talk to the students and tell them the various avenues available to them for the purpose of support and uh, at, at least now students are thinking about uh, entrepreneurship hmm. earlier they were only thinking about taking a government job or or maybe some it job so this safety net helps a lot but there are some students so there might be some students who may not be willing to venture into the entrepreneurship side of it so how do you think students can work on their employability like there can be seminars by the leaders to tell the students how they can venture into the startup the startup sector but how can we talk about employability to them well uh, we we have been talking about employability to our students and uh, there, there there is a very big problem I, I, I it's not only in haryana it's in the universities uh, of south also mm-hmm. when i talk to my colleagues there you give a job to the student at the last moment they will say i don't want to join because it's 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 a farther place from my home mm. either i don't want to leave the home or maybe the salary is good enough to sustain me in, initially so what we do is what is important is we need to do the job analysis area wise okay the student should be clear from the day one what avenues are available within a radius of 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers or 1000 kilometers hmm. so in the beginning they are told that these are the avenues which are available to them and then after that there there has to be counseling which is which is missing in most of our system hmm. and counseling not only career but personal counseling also there there are many issues within the families like family members are ill they don't want to move out mm. and then attitude training is very very important so one one particular training that we did for our students that was on organic farming like haryana being an agricultural state we were very happy that the, about the type of response that came in in any case everybody is entrepreneur here mm. because everyone owns some piece of land so they can always go back and work on their land only thing is they have to learn how to improve their productivity or how to do for modern methods of farming right so so it, it does work like that we have also experimented with another system where we tied up with a company and they placed all our students in somewhere near panchkula and chandigarh hmm. the retention rate was very very poor so maybe we thought we have to work in different manner hmm. so like you said that the retention there was not up to the mark so there are policies there are avenues where p- uh, students can go and learn new things in the university which are offered by the university but they skip it so what do you think students should not skip learning in their college life be it related to their academics or the personal life skills and what's one thing that they should skip well as a teacher i will not say that they should skip anything <laughs> but as okay. far as uh... <laughs> giving priority is concerned hmm. but i believe is that two things which might not be directly related to education which are the indirectly uh, indirect outcomes are much more important one is the command over the language it's very very important it helps at every stage and at every level hmm. second is the positive attitude if they have these two things they can learn anything anywhere in the world and of course if they don't like the courses they can skip those and nep is going to solve this problem also now we will not have the fixed uh, buffet hmm. rather they will have some something like shopping festivals like huge choices so there is no reason to not like any particular pro- course or the program that is a very good change i feel yeah uh, hope so but i mean there, there is of course little risk like a stabilizing new system will take some time hmm. as you said it can confuse the students because most of the students particularly to public universities like kurukshetra university they are first generation learners so maybe there is nobody to guide them in the homes and uh, so so there, there a lot of counseling is needed hmm. so like you said that students need to have a positive attitude mm-hmm. can there be any session where they can learn the tricks through which they can have a positive vision for life of course we we at kurukshetra university uh, with with the rusa project we have started this uh, diff- different types of training technical training as well as non technical training where they were trained in this uh, attitude development also so i mean, basically our purpose was to open their uh, minds hmm. and to their op- uh, open their minds to the new things and new ideas 
and this has certainly helped and th these were not lecture based training programs these were practical exercise fun based game based training programs so we have been using them and these have been very very useful probably it also helps in the in inculcating the team building quality in a student of course that is very important and this is one thing that i forgot to mention you just uh, like gave me the hint <laughs> okay. uh, in in our education system is oriented towards individual excellence i have to get the gold medalist i, I have to top and when you go into the industry there is no individual excellence it's all about teamwork right so now under nep the, the projects have to be based on teamwork so team learning team building this type of education is very very important so right the, 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 so uh, education earlier were a little artificial in that sense education individual excellence only hmm. so um, i see kurukshetra university is working on various aspects and it is trying to holistically improve a student's life but what's one thing your institution very stoically strives for well of course we work on different parameters and uh, we look for excellence and excellence on measurable parameters every institution is on to it whether it is nac nirf or some some uh, foreign collaborations hmm. so but what is more important for us is that some of the non measurable parameters are very very important we want to create a culture for learning in the university and something that ravindranath tagore said where mind is held high and the mind is without fear and knowledge is free that type of culture should be created in a university which has which had a long journey beginning in 1956 right plus i feel in universities a student is to some extent free they do not have as much responsibility in their life and they should have universities as a play area where they can just stumble and learn learn to get up every time they fall yes certainly well universities are wonderful places and uh, you cannot have uh, such places everywhere and there, there is so much to learn like uh, you apart from your programs and courses there are sports there is culture there are friends there is yoga and of course there is a lot of space hmm. so there you have very very big uh, institutions across the uh, like uh, in in india hmm. so naturally it opens the minds of the students and they, they should when when they are into the university they they must enjoy it like universities might not offer corporate culture of air conditioned offices hmm. but that's uh, student should enjoy that and learn a lot whatever is possible they should learn in that environment hmm. so talking about post college life uh -huh. when we talk about starting our own startup or starting a new job what would be the one thing i should i in my first job or in my first startup as far as uh, first first startup is concerned or first job is concerned i i believe that a student should uh, go without expectations because uh, they they do not know what what is going to happen and neither the employer knows what type of uh, students is going to come to them hmm. so so what i believe is that they should work without any expectations because it's all about a cultural fit between company and the employee and it's all about liking the company so they they should give some time to the company to themselves to decide if they are culturally fit or if they are liking a company hmm. these two things are very important one should look for but they should not rush into taking the decision that leave the job after a week because they feel they are not meant for it so give, giving time is very very important which is something which is missing hmm. patience is missing uh, as far as students are concerned so they should be trained for it also you have seen generations of students like you mentioned right now that kids today do not have patience uh -huh. so through this generation of students what do you think had been the most drastic change in today's generation compared to say the previous one millennial versus gen z <laughs> <laughs> certainly certainly like uh, what i feel is like uh, in the current generation pleasure for learning or pleasure for knowing is missing and what what is required is learning to learn this this should be the motto of every student hmm. and they need to be inquisitive uh, they should they should not take inquisitiveness or learning as a burden but should be take something which is a very pleasurable experience which elevates them to a very higher level this is this is something i feel a change has come among the students and maybe 
this uh, mobiles or technologies that are responsible uh, may be the reason behind it because their attention spans have also lowered. That's hundred percent correct. <laughs> so you have been. taking this responsibility of future building for a very long time uh-huh. how do you manage it like there must be sometimes demands that that are hard to cope with how do you deal with the stress and learning to excel in what you do well fortunately we in university i have been blessed to have a very good team around so there there has never been a moment when we must have thought that this is an impossible demand Mm. and uh, to take you an example uh, like when uh, this nep implementation talk began in haryana so being a leading university it had to come on kurukshetra university right so we said yes we will take a challenge and other universities were like ki you implement we will copy it no problem mm. so so somebody had to do it we took up the challenge so whatever challenges we come in we we had uh, we have very good team and very good faculty so that that supports each other and that make sure that uh, we we get over whatever challenges and problems we come in as mm. far as the stress is concerned i am i am a yoga practitioner so mm-hmm. it's one hour every day in the morning so i i that that's i have never felt any stress at any point of time that is great so you have a team that is there for your support but stu- when we talk about students they have to mm-hmm. handle the pressure of studies plus they have co curricular activities apart from that eventually they have to worry about how they're going to excel in their life in near future so do you have any tips for students or freshers to perform well under stress and handle pressure well in 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 the university we we have a very robust counseling system mm-hmm. so so they have they are offered counseling al- almost in every area but we encourage them to participate in sports and cultural activities and other activities there are so a large large bucket is available mm-hmm. so i think when they participate in these activities their stress uh, reduces any cultural or co curricular activity doesn't increase the stress because it's a choice not a compulsion right so uh, we have covered a lot about the times in the 60s 70s and today but in uh. the middle of it all there was a very different kind of time that recently nobody has seen that was covid so what challenges has covid brought in in the class and in the recruitment process and how are you dealing with it is it still affecting the education system today it has turned our world upside down hmm. and uh, there, there was some some good learning out of it it has uh, moved us 30 years forward right so as a result the changes are like in 2018 government has brought a regulation that distance education cannot be online if you take it online you will be punished oh. and come 2020 they brought a regulation that education can be blended and it can be online right. so as a result we are offering blended education we are offering digital learning and uh, and we we will be able to incre- increase the gross enrollment ratio to 50% as uh, as is the plan of the government so so everywhere it is it is making the changes we are very very open to adoption of technology now hmm. and government regulations also permit it right do you think this has made education more accessible especially the higher education certainly it has not only more, made it more accessible but also has uh, given the required flexibility for for example in in the physical education seats are limited hmm. if a student doesn't get english as a subject at the graduation level all seats are filled hmm. the the student can take english as a subject from our own uh, online education we are offering online education in at, at the ug level also from this session so the, the, that advantage will be there with the student that's great so uh, like you mentioned in 2018 a policy said that digital education should not be done at present things are very different and the new education policy is also changing the dynamics rapidly yet would there be one thing that you would want to change in the education system right now what would it be and why well i i i think uh, that the change that we have to make is that we have to focus on learning we can uh, adopt technology not adopt technology we can be employment centric or not employment centric that, that's a different thing that's the outcome of education what is important are we making our in, uh, students geared towards learning and how much they are learning learning and how much they are supporting to the external environment mm. so the, the basic purpose of education shall never be forgotten every time students must uh, reflect back and introspect 
and uh, see like uh, whether they are edu being educated in the right direction or not. So it has to come from the students rather than from educationists because th they know their environment much better than we do. That's correct. So we, we have talked about what students can learn, but if we reverse the role, we talk about learning of the teachers, not in the sense that they learn new methods of teaching that is also being implemented by the government as per the news that I've read. But particularly in your life, has there been a student that left a positive impact? Certainly, and uh, not, not the PG students, but my research students have, have always left a lasting impact. Hmm. Because when they come, they are very unsure and uh, they, they work very, very hard. They spend up to 8 to 12 hours every day in the library. And then they face various struggles because this is what research is all about. And it's very happy to see that when they do their thesis after three years or four years, uh, they are confident, they are very sure of themselves and they grow through this, all their fears and struggles. Mm -hmm. It's such a pleasure to see them growing this way. And this certainly motivates me also to keep working and to keep, keep reading. Okay. But has there been any incident with a student which made you say change your ways or ponder over your actions or anything of that sort? Any incident particular? At least not in India, but one incident which I don't forget is that I have gone to Uzbekistan. There was a seminar and then some students, Uzbek students have also joined in. Okay. So one student, when he was narrating his experiences, he asked me a question. Ma'am, what can I do for my country if I join the tourism course? And this is one question which virtually shook me because no Indian student has ever asked me this question. Their questions have been restricted only to the like career, jobs, this, that. So when I came back, I always give this example to them. See, if a Uzbeki student is concerned about their nation, we all should be. Right. So this changed my perspective like a lot. That's right. So what advice would you give to students? How can they bring a change not only for themselves, but also for the nation? Well, I'll, I, I advise them that you read uh, beyond your uh, subject and develop reading as a habit. Mm. And if you can't read, please watch movies and uh, maybe listen to podcasts and maybe and I always recommend them this TED Talks. Mm. Say so listen to the TED Talks, bro broaden your horizons and this and once they have broadened their horizons, they will start thinking in a different manner and maybe they, they start thinking about country also. So you mentioned reading books or watching movies. Do you have any recommendations for that? Oh, yes. As far as uh, movie is concerned, I think every student should watch Man of Honor. Okay. Uh, as a wonderful movie. And as far as book is concerned, I'm a researcher also. So Fooled by Randomness is my favorite by Nicholas Taleb. Wow, these sound very interesting. Yes. At least I would go for the book you have mentioned. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also, now we are inching towards the wrap up of the podcast. So before we leave, I would ask you a little personal question. And that would be, if you meet your 20 year old mm -hmm. self, what advice would you give? Well, don't, don't, don't bother, move forward. <laughs> that I think should be the <laughs> motto of our lives that we should not ponder over certain things for a long time. Yes, why bother something that you cannot change? We should work on what we can change. So I, this reminds me of a quotation. It says, if there's a problem and you have a solution, why worry? And if you don't have a solution, why worry? <laughs> why worry? Yes, right, right, Shivangi, very rightly. Yeah. Okay, so we come to the very last question and that is very related to life. What makes you happy? Well... Personally, my hobbies are reading and uh, traveling. So mm -hmm. reading makes me very, very happy. So I am a regular reader. So I keep reading different books. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the traveling, particularly the traveling in the forest areas makes me very, very happy. Oh, also because you mentioned traveling, I would, I know I have said that this is almost the end, but I would venture into this sector and ask, travel is important. But how important is the global exposure for students in terms of learning about life or learning about their, um, say, job prospects or their startup prospects, anything that's related to the future? What all does it add? Well, tourism offers a lot of entrepreneurship opportunities. 
because uh, i mean uh, you can open a small company and then start working on it from your home or from your town hmm. and you can be a, say heritage walker or one can be a guide there are so many options available in tourism industry like uh, employment is never a problem in this sector except during the uh, covid uh, phase hmm. when this uh, movement uh, was almost uh, stopped but how does uh, travel help us develop as a person well in tourism there is a saying travel to learn and learn to travel hmm nice so it does help very nice may i know the last uh, place you traveled to in the recent times uh in in covid uh, i haven't traveled but last place i traveled was uh, this uh, gulmarg in kashmir oh did you like it yeah i i have been there earlier also so i liked it uh, very much because this time i stayed at a little remote place Mm-hmm. and it was very beautiful in the forest area with the river flowing by the side of the room window oh wow it was amazing <laughs> the sound of it has made me happy <laughs> yeah it was amazing <laughs> okay on that happy note i shall thank you for joining the conversation ma'am it was lovely to conversate with you i had a lot of fun thank you thank you shivangi thank you very much a learning experience for me certainly and we shall connect with you in case we have some questions from the listeners that are addressed to you so we'll get back to you certainly certainly my pleasure and keep reading and keep traveling oh, of course <laughs> thank you so much ma'am okay thank you so that's about it i hope you had a good infotaining experience in this conversation just as much as i did and if you have any query question suggestion for us drop them at www.codequotient.com that's all for today we'll meet again soon till then Keep coding, keep learning, and keep fixing the bugs. Fixing, fixing the bugs. Powered by Code Quotient.